So I really feel that we're in a cultural slump, that the movies are bad, the, our music is bad, our TV is not as good as it was, uh, novels very, very hit and miss. Um, and, and I feel that woke and, and the death of uh, leftist theory is, is the reason. I feel that so much of uh, what people are saying is just not true, and you can't create art out of theory. You have to create it out of the living stuff of life. So I was going back. I, I decided I should, you know, I... I I myself have started watching older movies, and I don't want to do that. I would like to see new stuff. Uh, so I was going back over movies that had been made since 2000, seeing if I could pick out some good ones uh, that were worth going back to. And just one kind of weird thing that I noticed is that many of the movies, not all of them by any means, but many of the movies that I really liked from the last 20 years are about movies. And, and I think that that's something that happens as an art form gets older. It starts to become a little bit more about itself. Uh, artists who have been working in the business for many years uh, start to think about what it is that they do, and they start to uh, reflect on that. If you look at Shakespeare's plays, many of Shakespeare's plays refer to the fact that they're plays uh, and, and sort of um, incorporate the idea that they're on stage. Uh, you have uh, Macbeth saying that life is a, a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And so you have, as artists start to reflect on what they're doing, their art starts to become self-reflective. It becomes a mirror not of life necessarily. They don't hold the mirror up to nature. They hold the mirror up to themselves and it becomes a kind of hall of mirrors. And so I wanted to pick out a, some of these films that just are about movies that I really like. Uh, one of them uh, is uh, Coen Brothers. I think that they are probably the most talented uh, filmmakers working right now. But not everything they, I don't like everything they do. There are movies that they make that I desperately dislike uh, inside Lewin Davis was one, uh, just really boring stuff where they they get fancy and they get kind of um, esoteric, a serious man. Even Barton Fink I never thought was that good, although it had a lot of good lines in it, a lot of good moments in it. Uh, when they get esoteric, I just they just lose me. But when they made this film, Hail Caesar, this is one of the best films uh, of the last uh, 22 years and one of the most conservative films. It is an amazing conservative film uh, with George Clooney playing this dopey actor who is in a religious picture, uh, which is, is a wonderful uh, sort of expression of faith. And it has... Um, Josh Brolin as the film exec who's kind of the wrangler trying to keep people, keep his actors out of trouble. And what happens is Clooney is, is kidnapped by a bunch of leftists. And he's such a dope. Clooney plays such an idiot actor that these leftists uh, talk him into leftism. And he comes back and starts spouting this stuff. And here is uh, the great scene where Josh Brolin reacts and just uh, smacks him and says, stop talking this garbage and get out and do your job because the movies have worth. I mean, we may tell ourselves that we're creating something of artistic value or there's some sort of spiritual dimension to the picture business, but what it really is is this fat cat, <laughs> Nick Skank, out in New York, running this factory, uh, serving up these lollipops to the, what they used to call the uh, bread and circuses for the, uh, 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 you listen to me, Buster. Nick Skank in the studio have been good to you and to everyone else who works here. If I ever hear you bad-mouthing Mr. Skank again, it'll be the last thing you say before I have you tossed in jail for colluding in your own abduction. Eddie, I wouldn't, I would never do that. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you're gonna go out there and you're gonna finish Hail Caesar. You're gonna give that speech to the feet of the penitent thief and you're gonna believe every word you say. No, wait. <laughs> You're gonna do it because you're an actor and that's what you do. Just like the director does what he does and the writer and the script girl and the guy who claps the slate. You're gonna do it because the picture has worth and you have worth if you serve the picture and you're never gonna forget that again. <laughs> a very, very sharp statement about against leftism. Incredibly conservative uh, movie. I, you know, I think conservatives should just have it enshrined on their walls, but also immensely entertaining, incredibly well-written and acted. Uh, I just thought it was a, a great film. Another one is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and I like this again because I'm not a Quentin Tarantino fan at all. Even this film is about 20 minutes too long, but one of the things I've always disliked about Quentin Tarantino He's an enormously talented guy. He's an enormously talented writer. He's an enormously talented uh, director. And the reason I, I feel he's wasted in some ways because the movies are dying and have become almost entirely about themselves. And he is a guy who 
comes to movies as a kind of movie nerd. And he was, I think he lit, worked in a video store. And I watch his movies and I think these are not real movies. These are not movies about real life. They're just movies about movies. Uh, when I watched Pulp Fiction, I know it's it's lauded as this great film. I think it's way, way too long, an hour and a half too long possibly, and more style than substance. There's not a lot of sizzle in it. Uh, I, I really dislike his films in which he saves minorities and glorious bastards and uh, the film about the black slaves where he basically saves the blacks and saves the Jews by making a movie about them where they get revenge. And I just don't feel that his m movies, I feel he's a really good writer and a really good director writing about nothing. But when he writes about this, when he writes about the movies, he suddenly is writing about what he knows. And this is a wonderful um, movie in which he sort of justifies his whole career uh, because he, what he does is he goes back to the horrible Charles Manson murders and, has, and basically rewrites them. And what he's saying is that I'm fantasizing the life as it should be. And again, this is a tremendously conservative film because what it basically says is that the life of the 60s are represented, uh, the rebellion of the 1960s are represented by Charles Manson and the old values, the old values, of, especially of manliness, are represented in this film by Brad Pitt, who is the best person in the film, uh, a person who is the uh, stunt man, the stunt double for the actor played by Leonardo DiCaprio, who's a shallow, small, selfish person, and Brad Pitt just sticks to his values. And so he never becomes the famous guy. He's always being abused by DiCaprio, and yet he is the basic center of the movie. He's the moral center of the movie. And in this film, when Quentin Tarantino goes into his ultra-violence, which he loves, it is a moral scene that made me laugh, even in the midst of his violence, it made me laugh for almost 15 minutes straight. I did nothing but laugh for the entire final moment moments of the film. Uh, here's the scene where one of Manson's little girls, I say little girls, a teenage, underage girl, uh, hitchhikes, and Brad Pitt picks her up, and she immediately offers uh, to perform oral sex on him, and here is Brad Pitt's response. How old are you? What? How old are you? Wow, man. First time anybody asked that in a long time. What's the answer? Okay. You gonna play kitty games? 18. Feel better? You got some ID, you know, like a driver's license or something. <laughs> are you joking? No, I'm not. I need to see some official that verifies that you're 18, which you don't have because you're not. Talk about a breakdown bummer, dude. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> bring down Bummer. He won't uh, take the oral sex because she's underage, and you really get the feeling that he's even better, a better man than that. He, uh, later on in the film, he just becomes uh, just a, a really classic example of manly virtue. Uh, really well done, uh, best, certainly the, by far the best Quentin Tarantino film since his uh, first film. And, uh, and just a, a really moral statement, again, a moral conservative statement about how our culture went wrong. And it's, uh, it's really quite remarkable and it's, it's very powerful for that. Uh, and the other one that I just really like is Tropic Thunder. I'm not a big comedy fan. I find that most comedy films uh, die after about the first 20 minutes. Uh, this one, you know, like, like most films, it's not absolutely hilarious all the way through, but it is a really good film about the solipsism of movies, the way that movie actors are just completely selfish, self-involved people, uh, you know, more in involved with their process than with the art that they're in. And my favorite part of it, just about everybody's favorite part, uh, is um, is Robert Downey Jr. Uh, they're, basically, they are playing soldiers, but to make the film real, they drop them into the middle of the Vietnam of a real war, and so they don't know it. They think they're still acting in a war, but they're caught up in uh, in a real war. And um, and Robert Downey Jr. plays an actor who is so dedicated to playing a black character that he actually has his skin dyed black and it's really funny and here's the scene where he's confronted by an actual black actor he's taken essentially the part away from a black actor and here's a black actor uh confronting him in this wonderful moment of robert, robert downer jr who's just hilarious why am i in this movie maybe i just knew i had to represent because they had one good part in for a black man they gave it to crocodile dundee pumpy breaks kid that man's a national treasure <laughs> I just want to throw another shrimp on your Barbie. That shit 
ain't funny. Hey, fellas, it's hot. We're tired. It stinks. I'm what you kangaroo, Jack? I'm sorry, a dingo ate your baby. You know that's a true story. Lady lost a kid. You about to cross some f lines. Guys, relax. You stuff. know what? F that man, I'm sick of this koala hugging. Tell me. Some For four hundred years, <laughs> that word has kept us down. What the? F Took a whole lot of time just to get up that hill. Now we up in the big leagues. Get not turn a bed. Long as we live, it's you and me, baby. <laughs> That's the theme song for the Jeffersons. You really need help. Yeah, just because the theme song don't make it not true. <laughs> that is a that is a, truly one of the funniest scenes in the last 20, 20 years. The scene where he tells the guy not to uh, not to go full retard, which of course became a a, a saying. Never go full retard. Uh, just it's just a great comedy about acting. I'm not gonna. I I, I wanted to point out some of the failures of the other uh, directors who made these films and making the point basically that what these guys really know about is movies. And so when they make movies about movies, their movies are good. Uh, but I'm not going to pick on uh, Ben Stiller who made this film because comedians have to do all kinds of garbage just to make a living. Uh, so not everything he does is great, but this is genuinely, genuinely good. Uh, Justin Thoreau, Ben Stiller, and Eat Tan Cohen wrote the uh, screenplay. Really, really funny stuff. Interesting that I think the movies are Certainly moribund. Uh, they may be dying out for good. They may just be going through a dead period. Uh, arts do go through cycles of life and death, and then some of them die out and some of them come back. Uh, but I think at this moment, the arts are at, at a low point, but there's still some good stuff out there, and these are some good films from the last 20 years uh, that are about movies. Uh, so I just wanted to point them out. For more spectacular Claveny goodness, like and subscribe, and subscribe to the Andrew Claven Podcast. <laughs>